This video is about Punnett squares. So Punnett squares are a great way to predict the outcome of genetic crosses. Of course, I have peas here because peas were the first organisms used to figure out genetics or the patterns of how traits are passed from one generation to the next. So the first person to research genetics was Gregor Mendel, and he was an Austrian monk who chose peas probably because most monasteries had a large vegetable garden. And so he probably spent a lot of time in the garden. And peas have a huge advantage in that they have very easily observable traits, such as the ones that I'm showing you over here, right here on the side. So for instance, he looked at things like the shape of the seeds. Are they round or are they wrinkly? The color of the seeds, are they yellow, are they green? The flower color and so on. So they were really good for looking at simple traits. In this video, we're gonna look at monohybrid crosses. And what that means is simply that you're looking at one trait at a time. So you're looking either just at the seed um, shape or just at the seed color or just at the flower color. You're not looking at two or three traits at the same time. Of course, today we understand how traits are passed on far better. Traits are passed on through the DNA. And here you can see a cell. And in the cell you have the nucleus. And in the nucleus you have the DNA. And um, generally the DNA is, is in chromosomes. So it's in chromosomes. And chromosomes are just really, really long molecules of DNA. Here you can see the double helix right here. Now, on these chromosomes, on the DNA, you have segments that code for proteins. And these segments that code for proteins are called genes. And it is the proteins that give the organisms their traits. So if you have yellow seeds in a pea plant, that's because there is a protein that makes that seed yellow. And if you have green seeds, there's a protein that makes that seed green. Genes often have different variations, and these different variations are called alleles. Just like in the example that we had a minute ago with the seed color, um, seeds could be yellow, that would be for the yellow allele, or they could be green, so they would carry a green allele. Okay, so let's get to our example. So in cats, long hair is the recessive allele and short hair is the dominant allele. And what that means is if a cat carries two different alleles, so one for long hair and one for short hair, only the one for short hair will show up. That cat is called heterozygous and it will be short haired. So the dominant allele is the one that covers up the trait of the recessive allele. The recessive allele will only show up if both the alleles are recessive alleles. So if the cat that has long hair has to have two recessive alleles. Okay, so here is our example. In cats, short hair is dominant to long hair. And here's the first thing that you need to notice. The dominant allele is always expressed in the uppercase. The recessive allele is always lowercase. So let's figure out how to solve this. In a cross of a heterozygous short-haired cat with a long-haired cat, what kittens would you expect? So the very first thing that you always have to do is figure out the genotype of the parents. What are the alleles that the parents carry? So in the problem, the mother is a heterozygous short-haired cat. So that tells you that she has two different alleles. She will carry the allele for short hair and um, the allele for long hair. And it tells you that the father is a long-haired cat. Well, we know that long-haired is the recessive allele, so he has to carry two um, long hair alleles in order for, for him to show as a long-haired cat. So to do a Punnett square for this scenario is really quite simple. With a Punnett square, you always start with a box, in the case of monohybrid, a box that you subdivide into four boxes. So you want four boxes here. And right here we have our parents, this here, right on the side here, that's the dad, and this here is the mom. And underneath, just to make it simpler, I put the genotype of them that we worked out on the other side. So right here, right at the top, you're going to put the alleles of the dad, and right here along the side, you're going to put the alleles of the mom. So what are the alleles that the dad can pass on? Well, he only has the recessive allele for 
for long hair. So that is the only allele he can pass on. He has two copies of it, so he can pass either the one or the other copy on. Um, the mom now, she has an allele for short hair, so she could pass that one on, or she has an allele for long hair. So next we are going to work out how the kittens are going to look. And for that we simply fill in these boxes with what we're given. So how does that look? Well for this kitten the mother would pass on the allele for short hair and the dad would pass on the allele for long hair. For this kitten same thing. The mom passes on the allele for short hair, the dad passes on the allele for long hair. For the one down here the mom passes on the allele for um, long hair and the dad passes on the allele for long hair and for this kitten here the mom would pass on the allele for long hair and the dad would pass on the allele for long hair. By convention here's something that you need to note the capital letter always goes first the dominant gene always goes first. So now if we look at the genotype of the um, cats of the kittens. How does it look? Well, what we have is we have two kittens right here. Let me circle this. We have two kittens that are heterozygous. They carry an allele for long hair and an allele for short hair. And we have two kittens that um, carry two alleles for long hair. So, how would we express that? Well, we would say the it's two heterozygous to two homozygous. Okay, so that's the alleles they carry, but what about how they look? Well, that's called the phenotype, and um, every time you have a dominant allele, that is going to be the trait that shows. So right here, you can tell with these two kittens, or these two kittens, here we already have it summed up, they would have short hair. So we'll have two short-haired cats, And we'll have two long-haired cats, kittens, I should say. And that's how you solve monohybrid Punnett's grips. Right, Winston?